What's up? It's Von Bakenstein coming at you, and I wanted to talk about what's going to happen this summer, at least in my eyes. I believe that we're going to have a summer of increased violence, and I just wanted to go over some tips on how to get ready and prepare yourself for this and keep yourself as safe as possible. I am by no means a force protection expert, but... I know some things, and I just wanted to go over some common sense things to keep in mind to help you stay safe. So don't mind me looking over here. I have some notes typed out. So the food shortages that are here, we've known about coming for two years, uh, roughly 28 months. There's multiple reasons why there's food shortages happening. It's not just a Russia thing or a Ukraine thing or a crop failure thing or a drought thing or freak frosts and planting seasons and China buying up. It's, there's multiple, multiple things happening at once and it's not going to stop. These, this year's harvests are already messed up for next year. So if you're going to prepare Last year was the time, but now is definitely the time. Fuel shortages are exasperating food shortages. So prices, price hikes in fuel and shortages in fuel are making it harder for farmers to plant, grow, harvest, transport, package, distribute, and move the food that you eat. Not just the food that you eat, but every product that you use. Gas prices are going through the roof. So we went from under $2, and now it's at about $5, $5 in some places. And it's expected to be at a roughly six fifty pretty soon. You're going to have problems with people who live near you. You're going to have problems with people who have never gone without, who've never been hungry. And they're going to be experiencing real hunger for their first time. Not just, oh, I haven't eaten in, in six hours. It's, I haven't eaten in two days and I don't know how to deal with this. You're going to deal with people who've never been hungry and never dealt with actual hunger. Who've never gone three, four, five days without eating. You're going to come across people who have a sense of entitlement who have always relied on or been given or depended on certain systems in the United States, who now all of a sudden can't get those things and can't get that support that they always had, or the support that they get now is no longer enough. You're going to have people who have hungry children staring up at them. People who, uh, they don't know how to deal with that. Not that I'm saying that I, I do, but I, the way that I'm dealing with it is by being ready so my children aren't hungry. And you're going to have people who were fine, but now they can't afford basics. People who are calling out of work because they don't have enough gas to make it through the pay period. So they're calling out often now. You're going to have people who just say, well, I'm just paying for gas. Why am I working for that? That's going to further exacerbate, exas exacerbate supply issues because now you're going to have companies that have to pay more because they need help. So you're going to have people making, you know, where they were making 18 bucks an hour, now they're going to be making 27 bucks an hour to run st stuff around shipping warehouses, as an example. So those people are going to be dangerous. In addition to your normal addiction, crime, heroin, poverty, I want what you have type of people, you're going to have people who legitimately need your stuff and they want it more than you. You're going to look for increases in domestic policies that are going to make it harder for you to prepare. I know that's not what people want to hear, but when there's... Right now, already, there's increases in domestic policies with regards to food production, 
There's increases in domestic policies with regards to fuel, uh, travel, and self-defense. You're going to see cyber attacks because our country is woefully unprepared for cyber, cyber attacks. You're going to see more virus activity, corona or otherwise. You're going to see much more robberies, much more crimes of opportunity, but also planned robberies. You're going to see rich neighborhoods getting attacked. You're going to see more daytime robberies, more robberies at gas stations. You're going to see more snatch and grabs, more carjackings at red lights. You're going to see more riots where people were, were rioting for rights and privileges. Now they're going to be rioting for basic necessities. And you're going to be seeing more violence in general. People are going to be getting agitated easily. People are going to be depressed. People are going to be anxious. People are going to feel like they have nothing to lose. Those people are dangerous. Things that you can do to keep yourself safe. Don't look flashy. Don't look like you have money. Don't wear gold jewelry or expensive watches, di large diamond rings. I have a silicone ring. And when I don't wear my silicone ring, I have a tattoo. Neither of which is worth anything to anybody else except for my significant other. Um, don't wear anything flashy. Cheap sunglasses, cheap hat. This is a Pokemon hat. Uh, do what you can to go gray man and just blend in the background and lay low. Uh, it doesn't hurt to also have a pissed off look on your face all the time. People tend to leave you alone. <laughs> if you look like a deer in headlights, if you look like you're afraid, you will be taken advantage of much easier. Uh, granted, if somebody wants what you have, they'll they'll go after it if if they're determined. But if it's between somebody who looks like they could hurt you and somebody who doesn't look like they could hurt you or they want to hurt you, they're going to take the path of least, least resistance. Just like electricity, just like water. People are people and they will go by the path of least resistance unless trained or otherwise instructed. Do not travel alone. If possible, if you're going to the gas station, take your husband, take your wife. There's no reason, if possible, there's no reason why you should be going anywhere not alone. If you go to Walmart, I mean, that's that's practically a war zone. <laughs> if you go to Walmart... To bring somebody, bring your friend. Hey, you want to go shopping with me? Like, I don't really want to be alone. I want somebody to have my back. Um, don't go where large groups of people are. If there's a riot or a demonstration, stay the hell away from there. If there's a concert, I would stay away from there. I would stay away from anywhere that has large groups of people in it. Like, if you're going to do your shopping, do it on an off day at an off time. Don't go Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock to Walmart or Target or any of these other stores because they're going to be packed. And the more people there are, the more chances something's going to happen. Always have an exit in sight when possible, obviously. But wherever you're at, know where, know where the exits are and know where the alternative exits are. There's No good comes from being trapped. Do not compete. That's a personal rule of mine. When everybody looks right, you look left. When a hurricane's coming and everybody's buying generators, you buy ammo. When everybody's buying ammo, you buy medical supplies. Don't compete. Buy what you want when it's in stock at the good prices. When everybody's looking over here and they're getting price gouged on generators, and you're over here buying ammo because nobody's looking at that. Don't compete. 
Don't go to stores on Black Friday and fight people for televisions. But also don't compete at other times of the year. If you're not already ready for the crap that's coming and the crap that's that's here, you've done yourself a big disservice. But don't go and try to fight other people for stuff. That's how you're going to get injured. Arm yourself within your area's laws. I'm not going to tell you to break the law. If you want to do that and you believe that that's what's in your best interest, that's your personal decision. I should not, cannot, and will not legally tell you to do those things, but I understand if you do. Arm yourself. And the person that's with you should also be armed. Keep your head on a swivel. That's easy. A lot of people are looking down at their phones. Somebody just walk up and knock you right out and take your shit. That's life. That's what you're going to be dealing with. Oh, hey, look, this guy's not paying attention. Bam, done. Now I got your stuff and your head hurts. Sorry about your car. Oh, and by the way, not only do I have your car keys, but I have the registration in your car, and now I know where you live, and I still have the keys to your house. Not what you want to deal with. Don't be dumb. When you're out in public, pretend. A lot of you have never dealt with this before. When you're out in public, pretend like something could go wrong. And then just look around. Watch people. Watch their body movements. Learn how people act before they become aggressive. Maintain your situational awareness. Practice OPSEC, operational security. Don't tell everybody your business. Everybody doesn't need to know when you get a shiny new thing. Keep that crap off, offline. You don't need to go on Instagram and Facebook, and all these other social medias, and tell everybody that you got a brand new blah, all right? Just post kittens, pretend that you're nice, and go with the flow. They don't need to know your shit. Do not lose your faculties in public. That's another one that I really go by, along with don't compete. Don't go out and get drunk, and then wonder why you got robbed, beaten up, murdered, killed, why your car got stolen. Don't lose your, your mind out in public and then wonder why bad things happen, especially when you know that tensions are high. People are drinking to avoid their problems. Drink, people are drinking to deal with depression. Even though it is a depressant, that's how people are. Don't go out and do drugs and drink and then expect everything to be fine. Because it's not 10 years ago. Have yourself a plan to bug in and bug out. Now a lot of people, bugging in is the best option. Like unless if there's a fire coming or Cat 5 hurricane, there's typically no need to leave where you're at. Um... But with regards to bugging out, a lot of people, and I'm going to go over bug out bag issues that I see, my gripes. But a lot of people say, well, what do I need for a bug out bag? Well, Kyle, Brenda, Karen, Charlie, the first thing you need is a place you're bugging out to. And then you need to think, well, what am I going to have to deal with on the way there? And what resources will be available to me? And what competition will I encounter? Oh my God, you mean I can't just make a generic bag and it'll work for every situation and season and terrain? Shocker. Anyhow, that's my own pet peeve. Since people are typically going to be bug bugging in, network with your close friends and neighbors. The person that's three doors down is going to be a lot closer to helping you out than the police, especially when things are going wrong, because police, fire, EMS are all going to be taxed. So find yourself a neighbor who's cool, whose wife is a nurse, and make friends with them. Find yourself a neighbor who's a dentist and make friends with them. 
find yourself a neighbor who's a mechanic and make friends with them. If you don't know how to do shit, you need to make friends with people who know how to do shit or you're going to be up shit's creek. You need to come up with a with a plan with your neighbors. I can offer you this in return for that. They can offer you blah for in return for you to do something for them. You can't do it all yourself. The lone wolf mentality does not work because you have to sleep. You cannot be up 24 hours a day gardening, keeping and standing watch and taking care of water needs and filtering water and because of entropy fixing everything. You cannot do it all. You need help. The lone wolf mentality ends up with people being killed or dying or whatever. Last but not least, do your best to maintain your physical, mental, and spiritual health. I'm not going to get big into spirituality because that is not my place to tell you. But if you got someone you pray to or if you have something that keeps you going, make sure you maintain that relationship. Keep your brain, keep your mind going. Maintain your mental health. Do not allow depression, anxiety, and outside forces get you down. And with regards to physical health, do everything you can to stay healthy. Vitamins, minerals, exercise, stretching, hydration. Y'all don't hydrate. <laughs> Most adults that I know think that drinking two cups of coffee is, is hydration. You need to wake up and, and start hydrating because you're going to make yourself sick. Just just with body pain alone, your body holding on to lactic acid and nodding up is just drink water, flush out the bad stuff. That's all I'm going to say. So anyhow, with that, if you're not prepared for a summer of violence, a summer of blood, you need to get prepared. It's not a, oh, this is coming. This is here. This is here. People are losing their shit. And you need to be cognizant of that. You need to know what the hell you're going to do. You need to know ahead of time. Von Bakenstein out.